webinar. Today we'll be discussing the, the new templates uh, that have been created for you to use and, and show you how to access them. So uh, your presenter today will be Rob McLeod. Without further ado, I'll let him take it away. Go All ahead, right. Rob. Thank you so much, Carnegie. Once again, a delightful introduction, um, and uh, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad every month to get to talk with you guys who are actually Mastermind users. Uh, even better is when I hear back the other direction. So uh, please feel free to send me your comments to put your questions in the go to webinar dialog and such as we as we go along here today. But also think about emailing me other times with um, your suggestions about how we can improve this series. Uh, for mastermind and users um, you know we sometimes some months we do our our sessions only for end users and sometimes we do them for a broader audience that hopefully includes a, a fair number of prospects for mastermind as well and so you might hear me um, uh, presenting this in slightly different ways today this is really for mastermind and users so the assumption is that that you are already uh, you know comfortable with what mastermind potentially can do but you may not yet be completely familiar with with uh, templates and such. Um, so uh, with that, and we actually have quite a bit to show you here today because we've added uh, a fair number of new templates to Mastermind for version 8. And it's not like you need to know about every template that's in there, but you probably are going to want to know generally the, the kinds of topics and areas that are covered. So with that, let's take a look at our agenda for today. Uh, really, it's uh, it's three parts, and we'll probably only get to the first two, and and the last one uh, will be a little bit more of just kind of a brief discussion. So the first one is finding the right template, um, and that is really a a matter of just you know how to work within the create dialog to get the right template to work with, and there are some a couple of tricks in there that you may not be familiar with yet. Uh, then we will actually go into the um, the uh, specific new templates and I'm focusing really on three different areas although there'll be an, there's a number of templates for each one of them uh, sales management marketing and goldmine administration which are really the, the three sort of key areas that mastermind typically uh, relates to within your organization uh, so what I'm going to suggest is if you're sitting there at your desk all alone right now and you are the uh, marketing person but you really think the sales manager ought to get uh, listen to this sort of thing grab them by the elbow and pull them down and make them watch um, or, or goldmine administration for that matter if you've got somebody there who's not you who's uh, generally responsible for let's say the goldmine the quality of goldmine data or responsible for just making sure the goldmine runs smoothly um, if that's not you you know make sure that that person also sees this webinar uh, uh, okay and then the last area uh, and this is the one that I'm saying we probably will only give relatively short uh, time to is just talking about user-defined templates and saving them and there's a good reason for that and those of you who are real veteran mastermind users have heard me probably say many times why that is uh, namely that all mastermind reports technically are templates but we'll come back to that here toward the end and then of course at the end as usual we will do our half-hour session giveaway a lucky attendee will get a half-hour online um, for free of us uh, working with you to do whatever you want to do with your goldmine database, whether it's um, whether it's figure out some good reporting that would help you to uh, to oversee the process or to oversee people, or um, develop some uh, some process for for updating or managing your goldmine data um, could be really anything that we do with Mastermind. So, oh, whoops, that's that's the drawing part. Uh, from here on out, you get to see live masterminds. So let's go right to that and make it there. Okay, so uh, uh, I think I set a record there, Carnegie, for getting through the introduction in one in uh, in three minutes. You did or so. awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's uh, go right to the mastermind create dialogue. So I'm going to assume that if you're on this call. Um, and you're interested in what's possible with templates, you probably have a create license of Mastermind. Um, and if you don't, hopefully you've got some ambition to get one because you cannot run this create dialogue for, to create new original Mastermind reports unless you have at least a create level or a create level or a master license in, in Goldmine. Uh, sorry, in Mastermind. Um, 
they but if you it will already give have you ideas to pass on to. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Uh, and remember also, you know, getting a second user of Mastermind is a lot cheaper than getting the first one is. Um, so, so you know, having a create license in Mastermind is is um, is three hundred dollars to add an additional one to your existing uh, license set. So. Uh, it's not a lot. It's really worthwhile if what it results in is people who need information being able to get it um, without having to go through, you know, explanation, tortured explanations of what it is that they want for somebody who has a create license but doesn't really know the other person's job. Um, it's actually pretty easy usually if you know what you, if you already have sort of intuitively what you want to get to it if you've got your own create capability. Okay, so let's talk about finding templates and, and how you work with them. Um, uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of briefly introduce doing this, and then um, Carnegie, if I forget, well, let's make sure and do our poll right after right, right after this segment here. Okay. So uh, as I'm sure you all know, Mastermind has both the design new option, which is to just simply choose, you know, which area of Goldmine you want to pull data from. If you know that it's going to be, you know, history related, you can be specific about which types of history and so on. Um, now, uh, and, and then do your, your, you know, your fields and then hit finish. Now there's a whole other area here that a lot of people, I think, never get around to exploring, which is using the built-in templates. Uh, there are now, uh, as of the current release of Mastermind, uh, over 150 templates in here. And uh, it's not always easy to find what you want. You've probably noticed that if you activate the use template while you are uh, under main or uh, um, well if you if you just if you just run the create dialog and hit the use template uh, button the the entire list of all of our templates shows up here and you can see on the left hand side the selection list all templates is selected if you actually only wanted to see ones that relate to history um, clicking history on this side filters down so that the only templates that show here are are history related ones uh, I'm going to start with the list all templates uh, choice here uh, and I'm going to also point out that as you hover over individual ones here, you see that little bubble window on the right-hand side opens up and shows you what's the name of that report, what what toolkit is it in, and I'll explain in a moment what, about the significance of toolkits, and then an actual you know uh, English explanation of what the purpose of that report is. Now that doesn't give you you know in great detail you know here's all the fields that are required within this report and how it's laid out and so on. That's something that you find out by actually running a report. Um, but it should give you a good start toward finding it. And um, and the other thing is all the words that are on that little um, card there on the right hand side are indexed. By the way, if you don't see that card right now because the go to webinar dialog is covering this up. Uh, you can minimize that go to webinar dialog by clicking on the little minimizer at the top of the top of the uh, of that dialog. Little orange arrow. Little orange arrow. Orange, orange button with an arrow. Right. Yep. Uh, actually, I'm not sure that they've got that in anymore. Well, anyway. Um, so as I say, all the words that are in there are indexed, and you can actually use those keywords to find. Uh, templates that you want. You've probably seen me many times in, in these sessions put in, say, the word last because I wanted to look at reports that show me the last time something happened in Goldmine. Uh, or you could put in, you know, first. Or you could do reports that relate to emails. Um, and this could be email addresses as well as emails themselves uh, that, are in, uh, that, that are in Goldmine. Or uh, you know, whatever keywords make sense to you. And by the way, this is one thing that's, that's in a way sort of arbitrary. I mean, every, everybody has their own um, idea of what words might be especially useful. If you find that you put in search terms and you're not finding the templates that you want, um, you know, feel free to shoot me a, 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 uh, an email and just suggest you know, here would be some some search terms that would either that would help me find templates that exist, or even better, in the email, say, you know what, I I went and I looked for an email using a certain keyword, and I didn't find a template that I needed. Uh, either tell me what that temp what the template is that I should use for this purpose, or maybe that will give us some good ideas for new templates that we ought to put in the system. Uh, and I really want to get your feedback as far as what would be useful for you in the way of new templates, uh, especially after we go through this session today. So I'm going to go back and once again show the full list. Uh, and one more thing regarding finding templates, and that is 
Um, you know, you can do the keyword search. You can sort of sort through down here, and they're really just alphabetically listed by the names of the reports. So oftentimes, people don't know that if you right-click inside here, it's possible to sort these not just alphabetically, but by toolkit. Um, and so, a word about this, the importance of toolkits. So, toolkits are important because um, they tend to. The, the aim of them really is to group the uh, group the templates by theme either by who would be the typical user, goldmine administrator or sales manager, that kind of thing, or by um, actually the kinds of things that you would do with it. So if I click sort by toolkit, what we'll see here is um, the, the name of the toolkit on the, the left-hand side, activity analysis, is um, that sort of groups them together for obviously for a certain purpose, activity analysis, which might be done by a sales manager, might be done by somebody at an executive level, really could be done by anybody in the organization, but we, we try to sort of pull this stuff together uh, in a way that makes the most intuitive sense to us anyway. Uh, and so very quickly here, I'm going to actually flash down this list so you can see the different toolkits. There's activity analysis, there is, whoops, there's a constant contact toolkit, we'll talk about that some, gold mine administration, uh, one that relates specifically to IntelliClick. The main report, report builder one, these are really the templates that get run by when you do your design new and just choose things on the left. Uh, for the most part, that's what those are. Uh, a, few, a few that are specifically labeled marketing, although really marketing, l most of the ones that are under sales management are also, also relate to marketing. Um, and then we've got some that we just call miscellaneous, which are literally named after the tables from Goldmine that they pull their data and how they're joined together. Then we have opportunities, we have pending and history, that is reports that combine both pending and history into, into uh, one report so that you can see a, a flow of activity or a flow of sales across both what happened in the past and what we're, for, what we're uh, forecasting for the future. Um, then we have projects, uh, and that's literally the projects module, we have, you know, the opportunities module and the projects module in Goldmine, and cases for that matter, each have their own toolkit set of reports. Um, here, uh, alphabetized under U is user-defined templates. These are ones, and I'll talk about these again at the end, where you actually choose a template, select your own fields, and then hit save as template so that you can go back to that particular um, set of settings uh, to, to uh, to do future reports. Then we've got a uh, template, or excuse me, a, a toolkit of quote works related uh, 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 templates. And finally, sales management. I think sales management is the last one. So there's a lot of reports here that relate to sales management since that's obviously a big um, focus of Mastermind. Ah, uh, yes. And then finally, our service slash case templates. So things from the cases tab in Goldmine. So a lot of templates in here, and uh, if you, you, there's two ways really to, to pick your templates from within this list. This is, I think, the best way um, if you're doing it by um, toolkit focus, um, but I will point out that there is also just a toolkits menu up here where you can choose. If you choose one of those toolkits, you'll get a dialog where um, the templates that relate to that particular, that are within that particular toolkit are the only ones that are listed here, and you can choose them, but as you see, there's no bubble there to explain what they are. There's just a, there's only the, you know, the information that you see here. So, um, uh, and to get back, by the way, if you do choose a toolkit to get back to the main one, is just go back to main report builder again, and choose use template. Right click in the window here to sort other, oh, okay, they were already sorted by toolkit. And then just, you know, go after whichever one you want. Okay, now, whoops. We got a little bit of a of a preview there of a of a new field or of a new uh, report or a new f uh, function there. Uh, now, before I go into these specific templates that are new here, I want to put up a poll here, and uh, this is really just to ask you. I got it up. Oh, it's up there already. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank That's you. what so I'm quick. here for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Um, so the question is a pretty straight, straightforward question. How often do you do reports from templates as opposed to um, only doing them from the design new screen? Um, or for that matter, the last one is you might, you might just be a share user and you don't even have the rights to create new reports yet, so you might have to choose that one. Um, uh, and uh, one of the things that we're trying to assess here is you know, to what extent does it really benefit our users to add new templates um, 
if they are, and, and, and you know, hopefully that's if they are uh, really making good use of them and, and uh, uh, you know, creating new ones as opposed to just simply reusing the same reports over and over again, which is another perfectly valid way of using Mastermind. Okay, we've allowed, uh, I think, enough time to vote. Let's go ahead and, and put up the results there, Carnegie. So we're looking at, ah, quite interesting, almost half of you often use templates, which I guess makes a lot of sense. You're, in a sense, sort of a self-selecting group since you attended this webinar that's about templates. So hopefully you want to find more templates that can be really useful for you. Um, but for the, for the rest of you who really are looking for ways to get more use out of Goldmine, uh, sorry, out of Mastermind, well, and Goldmine, um, or maybe even contemplating, you know, how others within your organization really should be using Mastermind to get the great results, hopefully, that you've been getting from, from your Goldmine data, um, you know, this is, a, this is a good opportunity. So I'm actually a little, bit, a little bit surprised that almost half of you often use templates, but very pleasantly surprised. Okay. Uh, so with that, let's uh, switch that one off, Carnegie, and bring us back. Okay, so let's so let's look at the actual um, uh, new templates that we've got here. And this is kind of exciting because I put a lot of work into this stuff. We get, we've added some new functionality, um, not just templates that you choose sort of pa and then passively run, but ones that you can interact with a little bit to more specifically define them. Um, so this very first one up here. Uh, and actually these, these four that are right at the top here, activity since something happened in history. A quick explanation of those. Um, oftentimes, people don't want, you know, all of the history in the database, or, or maybe they want all the history that's in the database since a certain date, like a hard calendar date, everything that's happened since January 1st this year. Um, more, quite frequently, what they want is something that's a little bit more specific. Like, I want to know everything that's happened to the, to the leads in our database since the first time they bought something from us. So I only want to see post-sale information. Um, and by first sale, we're talking about literally the date, uh, you know, we're looking for a sale record in history, finding the date of that first sale, and then only showing the history that happened for each account since that first sale occurred in the database. Uh, you might use this, for example, to do a report of only follow-on sales. You know, show me, show me a, 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 a um, completed sales report that only shows all sales that happened after the, after the first one happened. Um, this would be very easy to do. So, in fact, you would just choose activity since first sale, and you could choose sale, and that would do it. Now, note that there is this new kind of interactivity here for certain of the reports where we can call up kind of sub, um, uh, sub parts of the interface, I guess, that uh, help us to clarify more exactly. Are we interested in this case in all activity since the first sale, or do we really, want, we really only want to see the sales, or do we want to see maybe calls, appointments, and sales done since that initial sale? Um, uh, I'll just do this one to kind of give you an idea of how this runs. So with my selection there, I'll go ahead and hit OK, and uh, we'll hit the finish button. So now, uh, and actually before I hit the finish button, sometimes I want to suggest to people, you know, put in a report name that is, um, that's meaningful to you so that you'd be able to find it in the future. Um, also, it's not a bad idea to have it be different from the one that automatically comes up so that your report or your workbook that you're creating won't be automatically overwritten the next time somebody does a report like this. Um, and the third point about this is you might want to be include in there the specificity that you added when you when you answered the the little subpart. So in this case, we said calls, appointments, and sales only are going to be included in here. So we might do something like that. Say call um, I don't know CAS for calls, appointments, and sales, or, or spell it out either way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the finish button here, and we will see what this looks like. Really quick, Rob. Mm -hmm. If people aren't seeing the toolkits that you show, um, that you're showing right now, would that mean that they are maybe a version behind or a release behind? Are you saying they go in here and they right click and they don't see activity analysis? They see something else? Yeah, they're they're just not. Or they don't see all of the temp all of the toolkits. Yeah. Um, you you may be a version behind. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, well, or activity now. All of them here, except for the one that's called marketing, uh, have been in there, at least by name, for some time. You may not see all the templates yet, 
but all the ones except for this one that's labeled marketing here have been in Mastermind for for some time now. Um, so if you're so if you're really seeing a big deficit of them, then you might very well be missing some some files some files out of your Mastermind setup. Um, but uh, uh, one of the things that we're going to do is uh, let's give you a little, little insight. We are going to have sort of a, a, a splashy um, release of our newest version eight, which is actually in version eight itself. We we've, we've been sort of leaking it out for some time now um, uh, for for various reasons, but but uh, what we want to do is have a big splashly, splashy release of it in early September. Um, within the next week, though, you probably will see the, our final, um, what would I say, pre-release release, release uh, our final pre-big uh, pre deal release um, coming out within the next week, and it, and it should have all the templates that you see here. Um, you could actually, if you download from, from the website right now and, and install, you won't actually see the one that's called the one that's called marketing, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, so we'll get that up there very soon, so that you'll be able to follow up and really take advantage of these. Okay, so back to the report that we just created here: activity since first sale, and I just want to show how this really relates to specific records. So this is the default layout where it's going to show us the uh, for each company name, um, the number of appointments, calls, and sales, again, since whatever that um, uh, uh, earliest sale date was. So if I go to, let's go to, Ad, uh, oh, maybe do a better example here, Abacor. So I'm going to double click on Abacor. So presumably from this report, they've had two calls and two sales since their initial sale. And so I'm going to just drill through all the way to the record so we can look at their history. So uh, in this case, uh, they had a they had a callback, a callback. Then they had their first sale. Then they have one, two calls and one sale since then. So you see what's being pulled here is only the the activity that happened after this initial sale right there. Um, and so again, how you apply that logic to the workbook or the analysis that you want to do, um, our idea is to to give you the report with the logic built in there, and then you sort of um, bring your own need to it. And typically, you'll come to the you'll come to the conclusion that you need that template, really by uh, I think by articulating a particular information need. Um, just you know, say it, spell it out, talk to somebody else about it, and in the course of doing that, you really develop the words and the language around what what you really wanted there. Um, it, it allows you to actually say to, to um, to sort of come up with a rigorous logic that, that explains what it is that you want. Uh, back to Excel and to this report. I'm not going to do too much with this except to kind of point out you certainly can get into greater detail with these. So for example, if we wanted to actually roll down the calls and the sales that happened, we might say, you know, let's uh, double click on this one and roll down the, uh, the dates that each of these happened. Um, actually, we probably are going to need to have the the on year before that so that we can be clear about it. So there's, okay, those are all in 2014. The dates, the year, uh, and then maybe within that show the um, the reference line from the call or appointment or sale or whatever it was, uh, and, you know, the notes or whatever else you wanted to show from it. But you can see that just by dragging in a few extra fields here, we can actually make a nice um, roll-up, roll-down report that allows us to look at any company that we've sold to in the past and just, for example, roll down their post their, their post sale activity. So the consumer rec reclamation project, they've got you know two activities, Crescent Credit System, they've got quite a few more activities since then. Um, looks like additional sales. Um, might want to include what the activity type is in here too. Uh, oh, actually we do see we see that over here. Um, to make this a simpler list though, we might do something like this. Let's show what was the activity type and re-optimize our columns, um, and that that actually gives you a little bit more of a history tab-like view of what happens with these, but of course having that history tab view all aggregated together for your different um, customers. Okay, so that's just an example of one of those templates and, you know, one possible direction you might take that. Uh, as you as you sort of let your thoughts wander about what's possible with all this stuff, you know, feel free to 
ask us questions, to call in, or to send us emails, and you know, we're happy to respond to that kind of thing. Okay, back to Goldmine, and back to our Create dialog. So that's the first one I wanted to show you, and I wanted to just show you this whole set of activity since reports. So activity since first sale, activity since last sale, those are obviously very closely related and they work about the same way. So what, what's happened to them since the last time they bought something from us is a very different question from what happened to us, what happened to them since they you know, made their first purchase. The activity since last sale might very well be something that you do that's really more oriented toward, you know, I want to know if there's been follow-up. Has everybody who's bought something from us actually had a personal online or a personal phone call or an appointment with one of our sales reps? Hopefully, you know, uh, you know, maybe I'm checking to make sure that that happened within a month after the sale. Maybe what I'm doing is ch just checking to make sure that it's happened recently. Hey, there's, you know, these are this is your list of people who have bought from us in the past. Uh, hopefully, we're keeping up, uh, you know, good correspondence and good. Um, uh, relations with those with those existing customers, so obviously very different uh, or is very similar kind of a concept, but a very different one for how you're going to use that sort of report. Um, activity since a gold mine field date, so that's what's happened since a date that is contained within a gold mine field. So in other words, not something that's that's in history, but something that's actually on the on the uh, account record itself. So just to give you an example here, looking at our demo database, or excuse, our, yeah, our database here. So we've got a field here called demo date. This is the date of when they most recently demoed our product. Okay, so and if you, if you have a field like that, first off, if you don't have fields like this, you probably should think about having them in your gold mine. It does a number of important things. It puts um, important information in front of a sales rep so they immediately know, you know, when I, when this record comes up, maybe not even a sales rep, but you know, anybody in the office who's talking to this to this prospect, you know, when have has these people actually looked at our product? It's a very different I might treat them very differently than I would if they had not yet looked at our product or, you know, send them to a different department or whatever. Um, and this date field can be updated from your history using combination of mastermind and MM updater so that uh, there's really not any good reason not to have right up here at the top of the screen an indication of the key milestones of uh, uh, when things have happened with your prospects from the time they became a prospect all the way up you know to to later on you might have a series of dates here like uh, date they became a prospect date they demoed with you date they first bought something date they last bought something date of uh, uh, their most recent uh, conversation with with somebody, you know, a key person in your company. Could be any of those things and all of those could be populated uh, regularly and easily just with mastermind reports and uh, using updater to update the fields. So now that's one concept and then let's add on top of that the idea of a report that shows you all of the history happened that happened since that date for each one of the accounts in the database. So again, if the demo date is a really important milestone date toward making a sale, then we want to know, have we followed up on all of our demos? Has there been um, you know, significant, or significant or appropriate um, uh, phone calling or attempts to make appointments and so on since that, since that demo happened? And maybe even more importantly, you might want to look at the history and say, especially if, if, you're, if your history includes both calls that did not result in somebody talking to somebody and calls that did, like you're really tracking all of your calls, then you'll want to be more specific about that, about looking at that history that happened since the demo date. Because what you want to know is not just did we attempt to call them, but have we actually called them since then. And use your, your activity codes and your result codes from, uh, from the history to differentiate those. Okay, so that is uh, what. So that is activity since a goldmine field date. And what you would do if you chose that template is it asks you what goldmine field contains the base date after which history items will be included. So is it, for example, a demo date field? So in here you would have to put in actually uh, C2 representing the the table that that user defined field is in. This doesn't have to be user-defined fields. You could be doing this if you if your key three field is a date field, you could actually use the C1 dot key three field. Uh, but in most cases, um, date fields are going to be ones that are not uh, built into Goldmine. 
Can you show people really quick how to uh, find out that? The what the name, name of the field is? Yes. Uh, so in this case, actually, if I wanted to choose the demo date, if I control double click on here, and I have a master license in gold mine, um, which is an important thing, control double clicking on a field will tell you the underlying field name. If it starts with U, it's user defined, and it's in a, it's a C2, it'll be what we call a C2 field. So it's in the contact to table, and so it'll be called C2.udemo in this case. So I could enter C2.udemo in that dialog. Um, I'm going to hit escape to stop looking at that one. Um, let me go to the summary tab as well. Now Goldmine does track some other important dates, uh, although I think we've talked about this a number of times in the user um, in the user webinars, so I'm not going to go into these in too much detail. The meanings of these are kind are a little bit can be a little bit tricky. So last contact, for example, is the last time any call, appointment, or, or email was completed in Goldmine. So if you actually sent somebody an email, that actually has this, uh, is th this would be the date of the last time you sent them an email, if that was the last thing you had, had happen with them. In most organizations, the fact that an email was sent to somebody isn't really regarded as a significant contact, so you might be interested in a different, you know, looking, using a different field. But if, for example, you do all your emailing in, in Outlook and not in Goldmine, um, and you don't uh, synchronize Outlook with Goldmine, then this date will be just the last time you have a completed call or appointment, which might be uh, might be a, a, a useful way of looking at it. Um, last attempt uh, is different from last contact, and that last attempt is the last time you had an unsuccessful um, completed call uh, or appointment um, with them. So. The, uh, that's the meanings of those, and I don't want to dwell on those for too long. I just want to point out that these are available, and you could um, actually you can't control double click on this one because this is not a user defined field. Um, this this field is actually called c2. u or sorry c2. last cont on l a s t c o n t o n uh, in case you want to use that field. So if I was going to do the report based on that one, I would actually go in here and I would type in c2. Last cont on, um, and that just that's the underlying field name. If you don't know your you, the underlying field names, uh, again you can do that control double click thing on the on the label itself uh, for the ones that are that are customized uh, customizable. For the ones that are not, you probably have to look in your uh, Goldmine help um, and and find the uh, the table um, and definitions. another helpful uh, tip. They could find it in. Uh, Oh, in Mastermind. Mastermind. By clicking oh, on the good field point. And clicking your gold mine icon. Very true. You want to show them really quick? I will certainly do that. Yeah. So, Thank you. okay. So, in this case, activity since the gold mine field date, I chose the, the that demo date. Let's say we only want to see calls and appointments since that date. Um, now, that leaves us with a dialog still yet to hit the finish button to go. But uh, oh, um, sorry. But uh, in the list here. It's actually, you could actually go in here and find C2, where's the C2 fields? So um, last contact on right there, if that's the one we're really inter interested in, you can hit this goldmine button and it'll show you what the name of the field is underneath it. Um, this just toggles those back and forth without actually moving or changing anything in your list. So if we actually wanted to include that field in our report, which we probably would in this context, um, we can just switch back and forth between those so we can see those. Good point, Carnegie. Yeah, I just um, thought of it. <laughs> yeah. And then of course you go ahead and generate your report and off you go. Um, and I don't think we'll I don't think we can actually generate that this one because we've got a lot of these to look at. Um, so this the last one here among the activity since is Goldmine history since a certain reference. So very similar to since the last sale or since the date of some of some uh, field date, except in this case, it's actually going to look in the history and find the most recent time that a certain reference line was entered in there. So uh, take the example of Abacor here. If I wanted to see a report that showed everything that's happened since a reference of 04 closed closed sale or 02 scheduled demo, um, that would be the that would be the content, and then when I run my history report, it would only include the history items that are above that on the history tab for Abacor. And again, that's 
the, the beauty of that is it's not a hard date in history. It's not every record since, um, you know, it's not uh, every account with their history since June 22nd. It's actually every account with their history since that item happened for that particular account. Okay, so that's enough on the activity analysis stuff. Um, go ahead and hit OK and bring back my dialog here. Okay, so um, down the list here, a few more that I find really that are nice new uh, new uh, templates in here. Um, history log by field. Uh, there's actually been a history log rec report in there in the past, but it's been cleaned up just a little bit. Um, and what we're what what's uh, and actually the old one would do all of history logs. So if you had lots and lots of history log records in your gold mine, um, that could be sort of problematic for you in doing the reporting. It could just be sort of confusing. What this does is it allows you to actually choose um, for a particular field that you're doing history logging on. So I'm going to pause from that for a second, go back into gold mine, and talk about history logging. So uh, you may very well be aware that you can set certain fields so that whenever those fields get updated in gold mine, a history item is generated that says they changed from, you know, uh, let's say this stage to another stage. So uh, the way and the way you manage that is I'm going to double click on the or control double click on the stage field again, and I'm going to open it up here and go to security. And here's the checkbox right there. And if you, again, if you're a master user in Goldmine, you can do this. You can tell it to log the changes to that field in history. So what it does basically is create a time stamped user stamped history item every time somebody changes a value in here. Now why would you want to have a field that does that? Well if you've got sales stages, if you have a sales process and you know that you're sort of marching your prospects through a certain stage, they're prospects, then you do a demo, then you're, uh, you, know, you quote them and you go into close and so on, and you want to do reporting or do analysis that breaks down that sales process so that you understand where are we successful, where are we less successful, and so on, then it's a good good idea sometimes to go ahead and turn on history logging for, let's say, a sales stage, a, a sales stage report field like this. And then, uh, you know, what are you going to do with that data? Well, you're going to create a mastermind report. There's not really anything built into Goldmine to help you analyze that information. But if you've got mastermind, you can fairly easily do something like this. Uh, run the history log report. Say we're going to be looking at the stage field. Say OK. And that basically is it. We're going to go ahead. And, well, what I probably also would do here is name again, name the report uh, something that'll tell me, um, you know, what it is that it's it is specifically. So it's not just by generically any field. It's really the stage field that we're building this report to to analyze. And we'll go ahead and hit finish. And we'll get a report that shows uh, updates to that stage field in our database. Now, this is a small demo database here, so there's not, not a large number of things that have happened here. But, but what this shows you is both what was the, what was the old value that it started at and what, what was the new one that it changed to. And we might want to show this, for example, by individual company. So let's pull this over and get a look at that. Uh, and again, I'll hit my optimize columns button. So, uh, so for Carter and Son, that stage field has actually been updated three times from qualify to demo, from demo to active, from active to, well, to disqualified. So that turned out not to be a, a good customer after all, maybe. Um, Chatsworth Enterprise, on the other hand, went this way. And if we want to include also the dates of when those, um, when that happened, let's just drop in the date. And then we get a little bit better picture of what's happened with Carter and Son as they moved up the ladder uh, toward being a toward being a customer. Um, now this gives us a lot of detail, and of course we could include notes and I mean really bring this down to a very fine level of detail. Uh, we might also want to do versions of it that are much more generic, not about specific companies, but to be able to see, um, for example, you know how long is the average lead staying within the qualify. Um, within the uh, qualify stage uh, versus moving on or, or getting out. I mean, there's a lot of analysis that can be done. Now, when we start to ask questions like that, there's not just a simple drag and drop answer to those questions. Um, each organization considers 
um, you know, movement through the sales stages in their own unique way. There's not a, there's not really an, uh, you know, an industry standard for that. Uh, you know, when somebody is in a stage or has been in one, um, you know, five months in your business, do you consider them lost, or is that actually, do you actually expect them to be in that stage for a whole year um, before they make a sale, before they buy from you, because that's just the nature of what you're selling. Um, so. Uh, we, there's only so much that we can do in terms of templates to really to really force this into to a final uh, report. But if you apply a little of your own creativity, a little of your own question asking, and for that matter, if you find that confusing and you want to call us up and engage us to refine this down to give you the final answers on things, you know that's one of the important things that we do for for our customers. So uh, you know engage us for for report writing support if that's what you need to get to get this kind of information out. Um, that may involve, that may wind up our involving our, you know, tweaking this report a number of different ways. Maybe not just laying out fields, but also deciding, you know, um, you probably should change your change how you uh, record the the uh, activity in the sales process in Goldmine so that you can support the kind of report that you want to be able to do. Um, uh, and you know, oftentimes that will lead to refinements in your actual sales process that themselves help are very helpful toward getting toward getting to new sales. Okay, moving along. So that's our history log report. Um, uh, I'll just point out here. There's also under activity analysis there are things like uh, well, it's actually not the there's a user log report. It's not under uh, activity analysis, but under under the uh, Goldmine administrator. There's a there's a report for user log activity where you literally can see you know what is the actual number of calls and appoint or calls and sorry the actual number of clicks and uh, key clicks and mouse clicks that a user has done every day. Why do you want to know that sort of thing? Maybe you just want to know who's using Goldmine and who's not. Um, could be as as simple as that. Uh, I'm going to jump down here also to the sales management one because there's a report down here I want to point out. Uh, sales forecast by user. Sorry, sales forecast for one user. Uh, this is a new one um, that really relates also to very similar to that activity analysis one, which is why I'm bringing it up. People often want to have a forecast for a particular sales rep that does not show all of the sales reps. So, so and the reason is you want to create, let's say, a sales forecast report for a particular user. Put in my own name there. Um, that only has that user's information. Uh, and which can be deployed to that user. So obviously, if they've got that report and that's the only one that, that's, that's available to them, they can't see anybody else's sales. They can only see their own. Um, uh, so this is all just sales for, a, for you know, one sales rep here. Uh, and I named it Rob. And uh, now typically, if you're the kind of organization where you really don't want other sales reps to see what this sales rep's got for in their forecast, because you know you're afraid they're going to steal from each other or you know whatever, then you'll probably want to add a little security on this, make it so that uh, uh, let's say you disable access to the pivot table settings so that a user wouldn't be able to go in and open that report uh, if they were you know very clever and knew a little programming. Uh, theoretically, they could go in and change to change the the underlying query if they wanted to, unless you actually just disable the access to here and put a password on this. So if you put a put a secure password on your on a, on a, uh, a report like this, then uh, users are just simply not able to uh, get any of the do any of the other um, things with them. You see the entire pivot table toolbar actually disappears. Now they could still move parts around within here, but they do, but they can't do anything to change the actual data that shows up in this report because um, they don't have access to the the underlying query or anything. Um, here, I'll give you maybe an example like this. Um, uh, that's still able. Yeah. Actually, I think I, ch I chose the wrong the wrong uh, security setting there. Uh, oh, here we go. Access to the underlying query. That's what I was trying to trying to do. Thank you very much. And save that. So that, so sorry, the one that I checked off, checked on the bottom for the settings, that had to do with the access to the 
to the table options. Um, if you wanted to, well, to, there's various options within there that you might want to close them off from. Um, but now I've also made it so that if they try to go to the underlying properties, they would not be able to do that either. And they have to have a password to get to that to, to unlock this workbook um, to, uh, to, to mess around with those properties. Okay. So, um, oh, I think I've got a, just an issue with that with that report. Did I just? Oh, I see what happened. I switched to the to a different report here. Um, that's okay. Uh, it was sort of asking me, I think, what whether I should whether I should uh, actually show that this is just Rob here, which in this case it does. Um, uh, and so now this report can be laid out in you know whatever way is useful. Okay, so uh, there's actually a fair amount of other stuff I want to get to. So uh, I want to quickly switch to the marketing area. Um, let me let me run this up here to marketing. So most of the rest of these ones that I'm going to show you, I'm not going to go in depth into the reports. I'm just going to show you what's there, uh, so you're aware of them. Uh, under marketing, email address list. A very simple but um, uh, you know valuable way of doing a report that includes essentially all the emails in the entire system, whether they are secondary or primary, um, and it is an email-centric report. Um, I won't go into that anymore, except to say that that you know obviously you want to include whatever other fields you need for selecting, so that you can narrow down your target email lists, and this essentially gets those emails into Excel. Very, makes them very selectable, easy to get into a list for uploading, let's say, to Constant Contact or for whatever purpose you're going to do. Uh, mailing list, this is physical address mailing list. So you see when I select it, we've got the address fields and city, state, zip, and so on. So it's just an easy way. You could have done this manually by selecting those fields and resorting this, but this is just a, a faster way to get to that. And this one uh, includes both main and secondary uh, contacts from uh, main or what we call, what they call additional contacts in uh, Goldmine. So uh, those are pretty key. Uh, I also wanted to point out under the, and again this is for the marketing person, even though it's, or the Goldmine administrator, could be either one, missing email address. Really important. I want to be able to do a report that just focuses in on people who have no email address. Um, so that I can manage those, either get them out of the database or assign them to somebody to get new ones or send them out to a to an outside service that's going to fill in the list that I can then take with Updater and populate back into my gold mine. Uh, lots of different ways to handle that. Missing phone, same, similar kind of a concept. Um, so those are two really important ones for the marketing managers to be aware of, missing email and missing phone. Um, uh, let's see, I had another one. Uh, oh, bad email addresses. Uh, another important one. I, was, I think that's going to be under Goldmine Administrator. Yes, it is. So bad email addresses. This is a report that actually goes and it looks for email contents of email addresses that are not allowed in email addresses. So if anybody's got a comma, for example, or a you know any character that's not an alphanumeric character plus an at sign or a period, then uh, or a dash. That, or an underline. Um, <laughs> so if it's one of the legal characters, it won't come up on this list. But if it's one of the, but if it's not, then this is a quick way to actually take your entire database, find all the bad email addresses. The under, you know, they may be undeliverable because they're just, you know, not really an email address. But if they are malformed, this will catch those and allow you to do something with them because you've got updater. Um, and this is obviously about, you know, sort of preparations for doing reports in or for doing work with, let's say, Constant Contact or with IntelliClick. I think I, I uh, sort of breezed past here before indicating that one of the things that's new in Mastermind now is a Constant Contact uh, toolkit. So if you are using the Goldmine to Constant Contact integration, um, this, should, this will allow you to do much better reporting on the results of that activity than you're able to do with, you know, the built-in dashboard that Goldmine has or the or actually, I don't think Goldman has it even in their in the report designer. I don't think they have any existing reports for those. Um, this will enable you to actually analyze, you know, what happened, what did people respond to, what have people been sent, uh, what uh, you know, which messages have been sent to which prospects and which ones have not, 
um, a lot of detail like that, and which, and, and for that matter, of those who, uh, let's say, click through, um, those click throughs can show up back in Goldmine, and Mastermind can report on them. Um, so there's a whole set here for constant contact, as well as a set for IntelliClick. Um, if you've heard me talk a lot, you probably know that my preference is for is for IntelliClick. If you um, want to have a, a, a system for doing uh, email marketing that really is very goldmine, built closely around goldmine, that feeds data right back in without much intervention from, um, from uh, technicians. Um, okay, so does that cover everything in marketing? Uh, yes, okay, so that's all I wanted to cover under IntelliClick. And uh, I've got a, one quick poll here to, to run here. So uh, before I move on to the Goldman administration one, there's only, only uh, two of them under Goldman administration that I want to show you. But um, so the question here is, how do you prefer to do your uh, mastermind reports? That is, do you really, do you like to build them yourself? Do yourself, do you want uh, someone else within your, or are you actually in a situation where somebody else in your company typically creates your new reports um, and, uh, and you just are more of a passive consumer of them, um, or do you prefer to have them actually created by a mastermind? Asking this question for, for pretty bald marketing reasons, which is um, sometimes it is really useful for you to, uh, to I mean, you may very well want to create, a, create reports yourself, but every once in a while it's a good idea to uh, engage somebody from mastermind to actually create reports for you. And if you are currently not doing that, um, if you want to have um, your reports created by somebody who really knows how to move this, move through Mastermind very efficiently, um, you know, consider that possibility. So uh, we've got a little over 80% responding, so we'll go ahead and close that one. And it looks like we've got um, sort of a, sort of as we would expect, about 80% um, are do-it-yourselfers here. You are owners of Mastermind after all, and you're here and you're here to learn more about using our templates. And bravo for you! Um, I hope that what you're finding is that there's a lot of really useful templates in here that you were not aware of, uh, or that maybe you were aware of them but hadn't really thought of how to use them yet. Um, okay, so let's jump right to the last section here, which is the Goldmine administration reports. And really, there's there's two key ones that I want to show here. Although there's quite a few that are in here, um, the Goldmine administrator toolkit is is mainly meant to be templates that help you to manage gold mine better, either manage the quality of the data uh, or in some cases just manage how gold mine is being used. The other ones, the sales manager or sales sales uh, the sales management one and the you know the analysis ones, those are more about managing people. This is about managing gold mine itself. So a couple of really key ones that I want to point out. Um, I mentioned about the missing emails and missing phones. Um, we're frequently asked about things like, can you do a report that just shows everybody that has no history at all? Um, and uh, in fact, I think, did I just pass right in here? Here we go. No history activity or no pending activity. Those are simple ones where people often will look at that and say, okay, what that means to me is uh, we've got a lead in the database that, that nobody has followed up on. Maybe that should be removed from the database. Um, or if it's, you know, there's no pending activity, maybe that means that it's already been determined that, um, you know, we, we don't consider them to be a prospect because we don't have anything scheduled to happen with them. No calls, no appointments, nothing. Um, transaction logs are a new template that you might find especially useful, and I like these a lot. So this is uh, this is a uh, transaction log report, um, and it is very similar to the the history log report, but different in important ways. So transaction logs, Goldmine automatically for every field in your database keeps a transaction log every time a field gets updated. You may may, may not be aware of that. Um, in that log, it does not store what the new value is that it changed it to. All it does is keep track of the date and who last updated it, and whether it was a uh, actually whether the uh, whether the whether a new record was created or whether a field was just simply updated. Um, and, but sometimes that's enough information to answer some questions. So if you want to know, for example, uh, without knowing exactly what stages people changed, changed, the, uh, changed their prospects to, you just want to know how many, you know, month to month, how many stages uh, did each of my sales reps move their 
customers through? How many times did they update the stage? Gives you a crude um, measure of sales activity, a crude measure of you know how well or how how, how intensively they're using uh, Goldmine. So, uh, and and the point is that's available to you from the transaction logs even if you did not go through that process that we went through before about turning on history logging. Transaction logs are just simply automatically stored by Goldmine um, all the time. So this would allow you to choose which field name you wanted to uh, report on. So if we wanted to do uh, the, how about that? Uh, in this case, I think we need to say, uh, need to look at which, uh, which template I chose here. Okay, so this is for the built-in one. So this is for contact one. So if we wanted to say, uh, maybe for the key one field. Now in this case, it has to be the database level field name, not the, not the label of the field. So it has to be the actual database level field name. So remember, we, remember how we looked at those before. Um, and if I do that, and we just call this uh, key one down here, so that would give us pretty quickly a, an overview of how many times has the key one field been updated? Now this is this is the sort of simple layout here, but we want to if we want to know, for example, which companies was it updated for, or uh, by which sales reps was it updated? No, oh, sorry, this is these are, this is the assigned sales rep. What we really want is the user ID uh, who did the updates. In this case, because it's my demo database, it's probably all me. Oh, it is, um, but in your case, you might have you know you might be able to easily see uh, for each of your sales reps. How many of the of those key fields did they change? Have they changed? And that will give you an indication of if it's key one. Let's say, uh, you know, they're usually going to be changing prospects to customers or or suspects to prospects and that kind of thing. Um, and that does give you a crude idea of, of how much of their activity has has happened. Okay, so that is a quick tour of new uh, reports. Oh, sorry, there, I just want, I'm going to mention a couple of other ones here. Um, I mentioned about the user log before. Again, sometimes that's useful for a sales manager to have because that gives them an idea of the intensity of usage by the individual sales reps. Or, but it's under the Goldmine Administrator Toolkit um, because it's really sort of a Goldmine Goldmine management uh, concept. Um, uh, last month we did an email uh, of Mailbox. Uh, sorry, sorry, we did a webinar about Mailbox. Uh, that is the inbox tree in Goldmine. If you missed that, you might want to go back and, and view the recording of it. It was really good, and basically what it does is, is um, talk about this relatively new template that is about that shows you a tree of all of the inbound emails for the whole system and how they break out by user and then within user by by inbox subfolder. Um, and that will help you to do things like manage overflowing inboxes um, because you've got MM updater to work with in connection with it. You can do things like delete out um, you know inboxes that are full of spam. You can either delete them or or uh, or uh, file them over into history just to get them out of the inbox so that a person's inbox is not just an overwhelming un untended mess. Um, and the, the and this report actually will help you to manage that. So anyway that was our webinar last month. Just wanted to kind of nod toward that. Two other reports in here: distribu uh, uh, duplicate contact two. Um, if you ever find in your reports that for some reason um, the same account seems to be duplicated every time you do a report for them, um, it could be that Goldmine actually contains two contact two records in there. That's a housekeeping problem inside Goldmine. Again, this plus uh, MM Updater will help you to get rid of those extra contact two records. Uh, and finally, distribution lists. This is a new report um, we were recently asked to do, and I've, and I've just added it as a standard template. Um, in the Goldmine uh, email client, there is a you are able to create distribution lists. These are sort of manually constructed um, uh, lists of, let's say, people within your organization with all of their email addresses that allow you to actually just say, you know, with one click of the button, say every, you know, I want this email to go to all 12 people in that in that list, and then you don't have to choose them individually uh, in the in the email client. So 
uh, I, my sense is that people are either unaware of distribution lists in Goldmine, or they just uh, or they may have been aware of them years ago when they started working with Goldmine, but sort of forgot about it. And that's one of those things that um, it's sort of similar to in Outlook um, or uh, what was it? Oh, in Gmail. Um, you know, you can make groups of your contacts. Um, so it's kind of a similar thing to that, um, uh, where that group sort of stays in place, uh, you know, over time and has a name. Okay, so that's it on the new templates. Uh, I would like to request before we go to our to our giveaway here. I want to request that you consider what other templates would you like to see added to to Mastermind. If you didn't see something you were hoping to see today, especially, uh, send me an email or maybe look through the list here and see if it's already in there, uh, and then send us an email with a, with a suggestion about templates that you'd like to see added in, and maybe the, some explanation about what the what their um, purpose would be. You know, why would people want them? Why should we actually add it as a broad template for everybody, as opposed to just one that you need? Um, and that would be very helpful. You can either send them by email to me, rob at mastermind.net, or to Carnegie, um, whose name is going to show up on this other on this screen here in a second. Uh, another Let's... way also is uh, when you leave the webinar today, there'll be a webinar survey or even the follow-up email tomorrow. Uh, uh, yes. If you take the time and fill that out, the questions asked there, um, just let us know. Yeah, and please do take the time to do that survey when you when we when we when you um, when we get off this call. Uh, let's go back to. I, I do here. have a question right before the uh, giveaway, okay. or should we do the giveaway first? Let's do the um, giveaway first because we're a little after our time here. All right. So. And then we'll go back to a question. My name for today's winner is uh, Katie Rock. Katie Rock, congratulations, Katie Rock. You are the big winner. Um, and uh, so here is, uh, and, and so Katie, you'll be able to use that half hour for whatever purpose you want to use it, uh, related to Mastermind, of course. And uh, um, so think about that. And I, th I guess, Carnegie, you're going to set up an appointment with Katie. Right. I'll give her a call. call. Okay. And uh, as far uh, as the question. Yep, go ahead. Um, I have another person asking about not seeing the templates. Um, I just want to make sure, and I, I verified that everybody's on version 8. Have we done a, a recent automatic update for everybody on version 8? No, we have not, and we will do that after we post the um, the newest one within the next week or so. Okay. So, so, uh, and and so, those of you who are on version 8 of Mastermind, you may or may not be aware. Um, uh, if you have not turned off the function that that uh, checks online for for uh, newer builds, um, you will just automatically see at some point when you go to launch Mastermind, you'll see a, a, a message come up on your screen saying there's a new version of Mastermind available. Do you want to download it? And and that will allow you to do that. It'll just happen when you launch your Mastermind. If you are not already on version eight, if you're on version seven or earlier, you will not see that happen, and you have to. Um, you will have to manually go out to our website and download the current version. If you're going to do that, I recommend that you wait uh, about seven days. Um, wait until, let's say, next Wednesday to be safe. And then download at that point, and you will be getting the current version, which should be numbered 8.0.14. Um, well, by then it will be 1.4.2 or 1.4.3 probably. Um, so. Uh, if that's not so, if you're and if you're not on version eight yet, you will need a version eight license, a new license. If you're current on your maintenance, that's included in your mastermind. So uh, all you have to do is send an email to Carnegie, uh, whose name sadly is not on this page. Um, uh, it's Carnegie. Uh, C A R N E G Y at mastermind.net. Yep. Once again, that's C A R N E G Y at mastermind.net, uh, and that will, and I'll bet she's typing it into the question thing right now. I put it into the chat box. Okay. Um, so so uh, if you'd like to get your current um, you know, version 8 license, just let her know. Okay. So with that, I want to thank you all very much for giving us your time today to learn a little bit more about using Mastermind. Again, please fill out the survey as you leave the 
webinar. Don't just uh, breeze right past it. If you if you can just give us a couple minutes to give us some feedback, it really helps us to do these um, events more beneficially for you. Okay, so with that, thank you all very much, and thank you, Carnegie. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.